welcome to me about today. Today I wanted to make a video on doing things I really love and that have shaped my thinking or really inspired my way of life. And I've been meaning to make a video in a long time, but finally it's happening. Um, so let's get started because my list is not long, but I have a lot to say about them. The first one is a color purple for obvious reason. The color purple I think was the first black movie that really touched me deeper than oh my god that was entertaining and I got to see black people. Also it was in the same time that I discovered black movies which made me realize that all my life I've been watching mostly white movies even though white movies are not labeled white movies they're just named movies you know everybody else gets to be hyphenated but anyway that's another discussion. <laughs> um, so I discovered black movies and I was like oh my god. Uh, there's a whole world of movies of people who look like me and might have a similar experience to, to me, right? Um, and The Color Purple was about sisterhood. It was about um, development and growth and self-empowerment. It was about rebellion um, from the norm. It was about perseverance. It was about self-acceptance. Like the famous line where uh, Silly finally says at the end, like, Okay, I might mess this up, but like she's like, I might be ugly, I might be poor, but god damn it, I'm here. Like that was such a powerful statement for me because it was kind of like, you know, like whatever you are, like that saying that people, like all these things that you make felt heavy for you, things you can't even change about yourself. And then suddenly self-acceptance, such radical self-acceptance, like god damn it, I'm here. Like if, if that's the best way to say I love myself, <laughs> I'm here, I'm gonna live my best life. It was so amazing and even like just the change of character from a girl who couldn't look at her beautiful um, husband's face because of course she was a girl to a girl who literally cursed him you know like with all that was within her that until you do right by me <laughs> Iconic I really love that movie but also on how we pass on the oppression we lived through, um, the famous scene where Oprah Apple comes to Silly and she's like, you tell, no, Ooh, what was her name? Her name wasn't Apple. She was married to Apple. Olivia, Miss Olivia. Um, was she? No, Sophia. Her name was Sophia. Sorry, I got it. Sophia. She was like, you told her to beat me all my life. I had to fight. Oh my God, that moment, guys, I was like, like the, the, the pain in her face, you know, and that moment of sisterhood. Silly was in a way because of her own disempowerment and maybe even self-hate or self-displacement. She and Sophia was the opposite of her. She took up space whereas Silly was kind of skinny and she spoke up and she wasn't afraid to live and say what she wanted from her boyfriend or her partner. The total opposite of Silly, right? And her need to oppress her because she couldn't be her and maybe her existence um, annoyed or even deeper than that that's I can't mind a better word right now like um, rubbed her the wrong way because it was a contrast to Silly's own life and that is something that we experience in life that we fear free people when we see them especially if we ourselves are um, in oppressed situations or encaged ourselves even people to people it doesn't always have to be the person outside of your your uh, social status identifiers like for example it could be just like as, as a black person putting pulling other black people down and telling them nothing special right encouraging others to continue abusing them to put them in their place so that we don't have to do the work to become free like them it was iconic and a beautiful moment. Okay, next movie is The Eyes We're Watching God based on the novel by Zora Neale Hurston. Um, the movie was special for me because it follows this woman, Jamie, right? You guys should see the movie if you haven't. I hope all these movies you've seen because they're not on you, right? So, Jamie is this woman who has different loves in her life, you know, but the last one is her most important love, even though it ends tragically. Spoiler alert. Um, because her love to tea cake, you know, already the name is like just a delicious thing you have for yourself. <laughs> it was the perfect name to give him, right? And all this life, but right before him, she was married to this proper man who wanted her to be a certain way. It was all about status and being seen. And the reason I also love this movie is that it's a great contrast to a lot of black movies who at that time were all focused on prosperity and 
you know, like living up to the white, I, from my perspective at least, the white perception of abundance and doing well and, you know, succeeding. It's all wealth and class focus, right? Um, but this movie goes the other way. She leaves that life of having it, you know, being married to a man, the mayor, who was doing all this great thing, you know. Um, she goes and dates this boy, you know. She goes and dates this boy who, who has none of that. He has no status, but he has love for her. And his love is wild and raw. And they, when they ran away together, it was the most beautiful part, you know, where she's betting on love. She's betting fully on this love. And they run away together and they have no money, but they have love and that's all they need. It was such, the scene where they're living like the, um, amongst all these bohemian people, um, nomads who are just, you know, they live from place to place, still with nature, like still in our natural, or I think I imagine like more nomadic way of living. Um, and they travel around the world and work season-wise. But that moment, that just short moment where before the flood came and all that, it was such a beautiful moment for me to look at, like having not a lot, but having everything you need. Um, because it's something I also believe in that I remember this idea I was obsessed once with this idea of my village love you know <laughs> the simple love you know like having and it's funny because in a way that's kind of what I'm living now in some way like living off the land living a simple way um, having what you have you know and making the best out of it and just living on the currency of love and happiness that you create together it's that really, that visual for me was so important. Like it just, it really stuck in my head for a long time. So I really love that movie as well. The next one is Cloud Atlas. Uh, Haley Berry is in that one too. I love that movie because of the concept on how, mm, like we're born again, but not even born again, but maybe our spirits and our beliefs and our ideals become continue being reborn right a lot of people say it's very complicated and you will have to watch it several times which i also had to do but it just really caught me like in the you know the first time i saw it, like even though the moments i had to re-watch it but it was beautiful in the sense because of how it portrays not only time but our connection to each other throughout time and how we are all in it together and how important in every life that you are living every time you are here on earth if you do believe in you know the cycle uh, way of life where everything is recycled including humans and our spirits but maybe into different forms but if you if you just imagine that idea that we live on this planet for a certain amount of time but our work is precious and we must do what we believe in regardless of how impossible or how daunting or how big the task is it's our job to do what we think is right at that moment, um, regardless of the outcome, you know, because in the end, everything builds on each, each other and everything leads to those people who are brave enough to stand firm in any adversity and say, this is where I stand, this is what I value and I'm gonna stand for it, even if I'm against the norm. And for me, that was very beautiful to watch and how even love continues to, lovers throughout time continue to find each other. And my favorite line in that movie was when the daughter of a slave owner, um, what, where the father said to him, you think you're gonna change the world, you are nothing but a drop in the ocean. And then she was like, but what else is the ocean but a collection of drops? You know, like that line just like, in my head because that is what the ocean is like that vision just really stuck in my head that we all we are the tide even though you're just a little part of the tide of the wind of the wave of the ocean play your part because whatever you believe in eventually if enough people believe in that that would be the wave that would be the direction and for you to focus on what can you do you know Naturally, I think when we focus on us, we inspire other people naturally from that. But just to feel that I'm gonna play my part and my part is important regardless of how small I might feel at some point. My part still matters. So that really is an amazing part for me, that movie. 
The next one is a very, it's a classic, <laughs> The Matrix, of course. Um, I'm going to be very brief about The Matrix because there's a lot of people who already know about The Matrix anyway. Um, I think I like The Matrix mostly because of this idea that we can live in a reality our whole life and not know that it's just fabricated. And that's where I think I am without going fully, whoa, you know? Um, in the sense that, fabricated in the sense that everything is made a certain way for a certain reason. Nothing just is in our society. Very few things just are. Um, and we need to be aware as individuals of the things we think are the norm. It's no such thing as end curve case. Everything can be questioned, everything can be examined and analyzed, and everything can be changed if you want to. If it was created by a human being, you have the right to question it. You have the right to decode it or deconstruct it and build it the way you want to see it. Um, no human being has the right of another human being to tell them that's the only way life can exist. We all have a say because we all live here. We all human. You breathe, I breathe. You die, I die. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's what I got from the Matrix, basically. That to examine the reality we think is the norm and that, that we think is the only way of seeing life. So, and I'll go from the Matrix straight to Friday Night 9-11 because uh, that movie, I think, was my my best time I dip my toes into the world of the news. It's bullshit. When 9-11 happened, I was watching television and I couldn't speak Danish fluently enough by then. I came home early from school and I wanted to watch, you know, there was like reruns of Beverly Hills like forever for infinity and beyond. And I was looking for Beverly Hills. Um, and wherever I went, this news was showing the buildings falling. But I couldn't understand Danish that well. So I was thinking, what is this? Is this like a movie they've shown? Because then my patch. And then like they show a lot of reruns of a lot of things. It's like this is like some movie that they're showing on every channel and I kept thinking that something was wrong with the television. And then finally I hit CNN and it was in English and they were telling me all this stuff and I was like, oh my God, what just happened, you know? So I remember that point, that moment very clearly for me, the day I heard about 9-11 or where I was, what were you doing that day? And how I heard about the news. So, Watching Fahrenheit 9-11 and the questions surrounding 9-11 was again like similar to what I learned in The Matrix, which was a movie, but 9-11 is real, right? Um, real. Anyway, so in 9-11 and seeing that documentary for me really made me question this, like the official statement or the, the official way of saying things, the official way like who do we trust? when the people we are meant to believe in actually have all kinds of agenda. And that was the first time I got interested in understanding how does politics work beyond just having it as a class in school, which bored the heck out of me. But when it was actually related to real life, for me, that was real life. <laughs> I think that was the beginning of my questioning time. It started with 9-11, I remember that clearly, I questioned 9-11. And because I was Christian, I thought it was all about, you know, um, the mark of the beast and the end of the world and Jesus coming back and all that. But that, I still appreciate that moment because it really made me question the official stories, all official stories, and I've never watched the news the same way. Actually, I don't even watch the news as, it, as of now, like I watch it by accident. But there was a time where I grew up in a house where my mom was a newsaholic. <laughs> we needed to know what was going on. She needed to watch all, you know, the different times of the day news. And I'm so happy I'm free from that because news is nothing but poison to your brain. It's just about, this is what you should worry about today. There's different ways to get informed. I'm not saying don't be informed, but there are other ways to be informed than the news. Because remember, the news is created with an agenda, with a motive. It's supposed to make you feel a certain way so you can act a certain way. At least that's what I believe. And so I'd rather get my news at least from places where I agree with the people's morality or motives in life rather than a place where it's all about corporate and they're in bed with government and in bed with warmongers and all that, right? But that's that's me with my team foil, I guess. Um, so 9-11 was also a very important for me because it was a catalyst for a lot of the things I started questioning. 
Um, yeah, and I think after 9 11, I think I started watching. That's also the time later on I, I was open minded to question food, question education, question, and then religion, and then you know, just question everything and say, this is the official story about this, but is it the truth? And who made it the truth? And why is it the truth? And who benefits from it being the truth? And who does not benefit from it being the truth? So that movie was as important. Yeah. And uh, then the other movies are also just more documentaries like Carl's Conspiracy, um, Folks of a Night, Business of Being Born. That one was the recent one because in the future I plan on you know having a little one, and I'm very interested in things um, that are related to that, like about you know raising be like growing a baby as a vegan, um, vaccinations, um, um, studying up on you know home birth, uh, doulas, all this stuff. I'm really interested in stuff like that. I know you can never be too prepared, and my. My idea isn't even just like, I want to be really prepared, but my idea is before I become a mother, I want to know my options. I want to know, um, I want to be informed so I can make better decisions or the best decisions I can. So before I even started making babies, I am interested in studying about that. So when I saw the business of being born, I was like, oh my God, because you never really think about it. And it's such an eye-opening documentary that really, by none other than Rick Ross. No, Ricky, Ricky Lake. <laughs> it's by Ricky Lake. But yeah, so she made an amazing documentary about that and the business of babies, basically, and how much of it is not so much about the parents' health as the focal point of the parents' health or the mothers and the child having the best experience uh, in this new and stressful, traumatic moment, but about but it's good for business. <laughs> so that really also made me think, oh my God, like I really need to think about where I'm going to have my baby. I'm not really against like having babies in the hospital in that sense, but I'm really for if I can and if I'm healthy enough, if everything is the way it should be, um, trying to do it as natural as possible. We're in a surrounding that is supportive and and I don't know, like calming and beautiful for me and my baby. So those are the movies I can share with you guys. And recently I watched What the Health. I'm gonna actually make a movie, a video about that, but more on decolonizing our health and our perspective of health. But that one was also very enlightening. Um, but I felt like it kind of also hit the nail in like the other movies as well, like Heart Conspiracy, um, Earthlings and so on, like a mixture of that. So. Those are the movies I wanted to share with you guys. I hope that you found that interesting and if you have any, you share yours as well. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Are you conscious of how you use that language or how that language was used to enslave you and therefore how you can use it to liberate yourself? All those things are quite interesting. <laughs>